Hey there, Friendlies, how's up? I got something cool today. Uh, samples. I don't know what to call my sample series if I do get to do a whole series. I don't want to call it Sample Sundays because that's what Whiskey Neighbor, I think, calls his, but what else? I have some samples here. I have five from my buddy um, Curtis, who those of you who've been watching the live streams will probably recognize from the first live stream. He was on the tasting panel. Uh, he sent me a few things. Okay. Here is uh, Jack Daniels single barrel uh, select, I think, because it's at 47%. That'll be interesting because I'm generally Jack Daniels averse. I'm not a big fan of the Lincoln County process, uh, but single barrel sounds interesting to me. I'm only going to do two because I want to spread this out. And here's a Brooklatic Isla Barley from 2010. Uh, you guys know I like Brooklatic. I like that distillery. Uh, my one true love is the Octomore, which I will <laughs> never be able to afford again, it looks like. Uh, look at look at those colors. I know the Brooklady, they're very into uh, terroir and not disguising the, the look and character of their, their juice. I don't know about Jack Daniels. <coughs> Excuse me. As I said, I don't really do the Jack Daniels thing. Uh, so I'm going to pour them both out. I should have done that right off the bat. I feel that when you... Um, I'm going to keep them next to their bottles. I find that when you, you know, you're cracking open bottles and pouring out little samples, it's sort of getting aerated anyway. But I'm just going to put this here. Um, down below, what do you think I should call my, my sample series? It's not going to be regular, but put some suggestions down below. I just don't want to steal anyone else's thunder. Yeah, they look very different. So what should I try first? I'm going to do the Jack Daniels first because it's such a, a weird one for me. So if that is natural color, then that's a very nice color. Uh, I wonder if filtering through charcoal, it's, I think, maple charcoal. I, I wonder if that actually imparts any color. Or if it's all just barrel and possibly caramel coloring. Also, do they do they caramel color? If you guys know, drop it down below as well. Well, it's definitely a higher ABV. Get that right off the nose. You guys hear that? <laughs> Two and a half year old in the house, it gets very loud when you're in the basement. Um, very high octane. I'm getting sort of the familiar caramel and vanilla notes. Definitely an oaky spice though. That's the cool thing about bourbons or Tennessee whiskeys, is that because they're throwing them into virgin oak, they get oaked really fast. Yeah, very nice. There's a woody thing in there that I like. <clears throat> All right, that's enough of this. Let's just go right in, shall we? Okay. Caramel and vanilla, obviously. The oak spice is very present. This is definitely not a very old whiskey. Um, slightly peppery on the oak. There's like a nutty thing happening. The caramel and the vanilla are, are very, very present. American oak, that's where your vanilla is coming from. It definitely goes nutty, and then there's a little licorice thing happening in, in, the, uh, in the finish. But this, this is like, I wouldn't say it's diametrically opposite to a run-of-the-mill old number seven, but this is a hell of a lot better. Like, this is a Jack Daniels I might buy a bottle of one, at one point. It's hot, okay? It's youthful and hot. It definitely sort of lands on the tongue noticeably. Uh, a little effervescence there, a little sparkle. Flavors are there and present, and, and they really sort of, uh, they mitigate things. Tasty. I'm gonna put this aside. Oh, I forgot my water, I'll be right back. Mm. Yeah, you definitely wanna cleanse your palate between these two, I think. Brooklady. 
So the whole concept, the conceit behind the Isle of Barley is that Buchladi convinced a bunch of local to them farmers to grow barley for, uh, for malting. And apparently it creates a unique character. Uh, I don't know what to expect. I haven't read up on this. When these arrived, I decided I ain't looking any of them up. I do like the color. It's nice and it's like a, a, a light amber. One thing I did forget to say about that Jack Daniels, by the way, is that a nice oiliness to it. Forgot to mention that. I very often forget that. I'm sorry. Going by what I'm seeing here, it'll probably be somewhat similar. Maybe a little less oily, but we'll see. Yeah, it's 50%. It's not, 50% is a really nice ABV to hit. I keep looking at the wrong side of the phone. Sorry, guys. Mm. Wow, there's something oceanic. Like a saltwater air. Oh, this is not a peated whiskey, so... There's no peat happening, but this is a seaside dram. Like I'm immediately transported to the side of the ocean. Not like um, whatever Dollar Sud is in English. Not not like down around the equator in the tropics or anything, but like Newfoundland, uh, Nordic countries, obviously you know the British Isles. You know, it, it's not a, a sunny palm trees ocean side. It's breezy day, coarse sand, coarse ocean side grasses, storm clouds on the horizon, slightly gray day, very cool, maybe post rain. If there's something peppery, there's something spicy. Obviously, there's, there's the vanilla and toffee that I often get with, with these drams. Smells fantastic. All right, I'm going in. I'm gonna go palette. I am not disappointed. Oh, mouthfeel is big. There's a butter tart, or maybe just something. Something buttery happening. Um, vanilla, toffee, there's a, a custard or something creamy. I'm, I'm not sure. It's um, very malty. Very malty. There's a brown sugar thing going on there. Oh, man. The nose hasn't changed very much, but now there's a brown sugar um, emerging. Good mouthfeel, nice oiliness. Uh, getting a dark berries, not strawberries, something bigger, uh, like a blackberry, raspberries, stuff like that. Coffee hits, it arrives late, but it's there. Back of the, of the mouth. Mm. Now I'm getting kind of an apple thing, a lemon peel there on the finish. Very, very nice. Still that ocean side feel. There's a saltiness, a salt air there. It's positively oceanic. I need a bottle of this. I need a bottle of this. Going back to the Jack Daniels, um, this is the best Jack Daniels I've ever had. I've had a few, like some of their flavored ones and the honey and all that. No, I've never actively liked the Jack Daniels before. This one could change that. Uh, I would love to see what this is like as a mixer because it, it's got more presence than than the number seven or any of the others. It's still a little smoother, almost a Canadian whiskey politeness, but yeah, now there's something fruity happening. And I wonder if that's because it's been open opening up or if it's because I'm bouncing back and forth between the two. But this, this, oh man, this I would like to have in my bar cart at some point. This I deeply want to have in my bar cart, like yesterday. Mm. 
Thanks, Curtis. These are both really nice. I'm going to finish these off. I'm going to relax with them. But yeah, uh, that's all she wrote. Thanks for hanging out with me on this this cool little uh, sample sample tasting. As I always say, if you like what I'm doing, then please do the following three things, one of which I've already asked you. Comment down below. You know the question. I've already asked it. Second thing, share this video. That helps me more than you could possibly imagine. And third, leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't like what I'm doing, that's okay. Leave me a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys.